Praise on the Lord. The grace that transcends appears to all men. And it's open to all of us. Amen. Are you happy to be gathered this evening? Amen. Would like to draw your attention. Is the mic too loud? Is it? It's good, huh? Okay. Matthew chapter 12, no, 11, verse, verse 20. 11. Yes, Matthew 11 from verse 20. And Isaiah chapter 35 from verse 4. And then John chapter 14 and 12. Then began he to upbraid the cities wherein most of his mighty works were done because they repented not. Because again, these people are partakers of another form of work. Works that were never seen by man. And now God is comparing them to other cities that were worse off. Go oh, unto the Torazin, go oh, unto thee, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and in Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. Tyre and Sidon are not good cities. But Jesus is using them as an allegory to compare. And, if, and he says that if they were partakers of a particular kind of miracle, they would have repented. Praise God. Amen. Verse 22. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the day of judgment done for you. O thou Capernaum, you know there's someone that used the scripture the wrong way. O thou Capernaum, which art exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which have been done in thee have been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. You can imagine if Sodom had miracles. That's what Jesus is saying. That Sodom was a mirac miraculous town. What if they had miracles? Perhaps they would have had a different outcome. Praise God. Yeah. But something we are seeing here is this Jesus is so saddened about Capernaum. Because there's something Capernaum has tested. And there was a particular attitude they should have had because of what they saw. But they did not change their attitude. They did not receive what came before them. Praise God. And at this wonderful evening, I'm just continuing with what I was sharing, and I would like to talk on the works of the Messiah. Praise God. Amen. The works of the Messiah. Father, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, we thank you for this wonderful evening that you are gathered here to share your word. As it has been prayed, O oh God, that I may you take these scriptures and bring them to life, that you can get uh, inspired this wonderful evening. We thank you and we honor you. It's in the mighty name of Jesus, I do pray, trusting and believing. Amen. amen and amen. May have your seats. Let me read again a scripture that uh, we always... I'll come back to it, but let me read it as I'm beginning. This is Jesus now is changing his ministry in Matthew chapter 11. Praise God. And again, the same, same thing you'll find in John chapter 14. You'll find the disciples troubled in their heart. Because the Messiah that was coming was rejected. And this Messiah is about to go. And he's telling them, where I'm going, you cannot go with me. Praise God. And then they were troubled in their hearts. And then he tells them, let not your heart be troubled. He believe in God, believe also in me. And then when you go to verse 12, he says, verily, verily, I say unto you. The moment you get the word, verily, verily, that is a man putting his reputation at stake. Praise God. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, not as what Paul taught us, but as the Messiah. Praise God. Amen. Very, very, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. That statement was so encouraging for these people. These people are so discouraged. Just such, to hear such a statement from Jesus, that you mean I can also do the works that you are doing? 
it was also encouraging for them. The works that I do, the works I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than this shall he do, because I go unto the Father. Praise God. Amen. Uh, let me just give read another scripture. Isaiah chapter 35 from verse 4. I read it the previous time. Isaiah chapter 35 from verse 4. And it says, Isaiah 35, are you there with me? Amen. Say to them that are fearless, that are fear, that are of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your Lord will come with vengeance, even God with a recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as a heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing. For in the wilderness shall the water break out and streams in the desert. Praise the wonderful name. So that my sharing God with you this evening, the works of the Messiah. There were some specific works that the Jews expected the Messiah will do. Praise the wonderful name. Is that what we shared last Wednesday when we talked about messianic miracles? Praise the wonderful name. And now when they, they were when they were partakers of the same miracles, some of them did not repent. Praise the wonderful name. And when you come to Matthew 11 verse 23, Jesus is, is weeping for this city, Capernaum. Because Capernaum was a town that saw a leper get healed. Praise God. Amen. Such was never seen in Israel. And when we studied, we realized that there were particular miracles that were never, never seen in Israel. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. And these miracles attributed Jesus as the Messiah. Praise his wonderful name. Amen. And when you talk about miracles, when you talk about signs and wonders, we realize that it is always connected with a Jew believing. Praise God. Amen. Because it says a Jew or a Jew demands a sign. A Jew requires a sign. A Jew cannot believe without a sign. A Jew needs something that would for him to be able to believe. Praise God. Amen. A Greek seeks after wisdom. Praise God. But our gospel was a stumbling block to them because it was just about faith and believing the Lord Jesus Christ. So what did we learn? We realized that when the Messiah was coming, there were some miracles that were attributed to the Messiah. There were some things that when the Messiah did, they believed that it was the Messiah. Praise God. And when you look at how the witnesses of the Messiah wrote about Jesus, the Gospels is witnessing about this move of a man of Nazareth. Praise God. Who is this man that came to Nazareth? What are his characteristics? Where does he come from? Praise the wonderful name. And John, Luke, Mark, and Matthew, they all had different lenses on how they looked at Jesus. Praise God. Amen. And when you come to the Gospel of John, John is not unique when he speaks about miracles. He's not unique. But there was something about John when he spoke about the miracle that Jesus did. The miracles of John were connected to the identity of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the wonderful name. Every sign that John writes in his gospel was connected to knowing Jesus as that Christ. Praise God. It was not just another form of there are some miracles in the book of John you will never find in other synoptic gospels. Because John had a purpose of saying this man that came in Nazareth was a different kind of a man. His identity is an identity. It's a man you should follow. You should watch. Praise God. Because you have to understand that even John is a man that is so keen with identity. Even when he is mentioning about John, he was he had to be sure that the readers will not confuse John as the Messiah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Because his main aim is that people that are going to read this gospel are going to find that this man that was born in Nazareth is the true anointed one that we have been waiting for. Praise the wonderful name. And he picked specific miracles that were connected to when this man comes. The woman at the well said, we know when he comes, he will do these things. Praise the wonderful name. So there were some things they knew when he comes, these things will be done in our lives. So John comes and says, they ask John, John, are you the one? 
John says, I am not the light. I'm just here to for the light. So I'm not to be specific. I am not the light. I am for in the light. I'm just bearing witness for that light that is coming. Praise on the name. And they asked John then, who are you? Are you Elias? But the book of John is a book of identity. Amen. It's a book of knowing who are these. That is why when it says greater work than this shall you do, John does not expect you to confuse who are these people doing the greater works. Amen. Praise on the name. You will be doing John a disservice if you don't get that thing. Because the aim of John is you understand. My book has an objective. You should know the Messiah. Praise on the name. Amen. Who was the Messiah sent to? Praise God. And because this in a, Jew, in, in, in a Jewish context, everything must be established in the eyes of two or three witnesses. Praise on the name. And Matthew was a witness of this man. Mark was a witness of this man. Praise God. Luke was a witness. He said, I am writing to you, O excellent Theophilus, because I have perfect understanding. There are some things that happen in this land that I think you should come to know about that man. Praise on the name. And he's leaving a story about this man. And I want you to understand, you have to know how you know Jesus. It is so important. How do you know Jesus? Praise on the name. Because Jesus is not a straight person in history. Even in the Quran, Jesus is there. Praise on the name. But what sets us apart is what Jesus means to us. Praise on the name. There's a way Jesus means to the children of Israel. And there's a way Jesus means to you. It is not the same. Praise on the name. We preach Jesus according to the revelation of the mystery. According to Romans chapter 16, verse 25. Praise God. But the Jews are expecting a son of David according to 2 Samuel chapter 7. Praise on the name. That I'm going to give you an heir that is going to reign forever. Praise God. And they knew that always someone out of the house of Judah, there was someone that is going to come to reign. That was not your expectation. That was not something you were waiting for. Praise the wonderful name. You are without God, without covenants, strangers to the commonwealth of Israel. Praise God. But to whom pertains the covenant? It is Israel. To whom pertains the adoption? It is Israel. Praise the wonderful name. To whom pertains the adoption? It is those Israelites. Praise the wonderful name. So I will see, when these witnesses are writing the gospels, they have a purpose. They have an attribute. They, they, they have an objective they want to achieve. Praise God. And when you see Matthew writing about Jesus, he has to go to the genealogy. He says, this book is a book of generations. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. The book of the generation of Jesus Christ. Amen. Son of David, son of Abraham. Amen. Praise God. Amen. You already tell you, this man that I'm going to talk about in this book, there was something about this man. Amen. This man is the son of David. Amen. You remember the promise that was told unto us? This man is the son of Abraham. Praise God. Amen. That already kicks you out of the picture. That, that introduction of the book of Matthew puts you outside. Praise God. Amen. By flesh, you are not a son of Abraham. Praise God. Amen. By flesh, you are not expecting any descendant from the house of David. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Already the introduction, you are a stranger to the book. Amen. Why should this man be from David? Why should this man be from Abraham? Praise God. Amen. So we see now these, these witnesses that witness this man that came to in Jerusalem. There are some things they say about this man. Praise the Lord. And John when he's talking about Jesus. Every sign that Jesus does, John connects it with the identity of Jesus. Praise God. Everything that Jesus does, it is connected with who this person is. And now, what follows? You have to believe and receive eternal life. Amen. Praise God. That is not what you believe. When you see the sign, you believe you have everlasting life. When you see the sign, you believe you have everlasting life. Praise God. But that is not how you got eternal life. Amen. Praise God. Amen. That is not how you get eternal life. Amen. But when you see how the gospel of John is written, John had a purpose. John had an objective. And his objective was one. He even came to a place and said, you know what? In John chapter 10 from verse 21, that John the Baptist had no miracles. He had no signs. Praise God. But there was something about this man that John for a reign that he has signs. Praise God. So John has a purpose. John has an, a, a, John is about to set, to presenting a picture to these people that this man, by the works that he is doing, he is the Messiah. Praise God. And it, when he is presenting that, that uh, 
that picture of Jesus being the Messiah. You will find a lot of places in the book of John that if you believe, you will have eternal life. You will find very, very good scriptures that you also want to associate yourself with. Praise the wonderful name. If I could just read for you, I, these scriptures, you know them. But I want you to understand what is John presenting. Because now when these works were presented to the children of Israel, they should believe this Messiah to be someone. Praise God. And when you go to John chapter, let me just read something for you here. Because there were moves time and time again in Israel about people that claim to be the Messiah. Praise God. And when you read even history by a man called Josephus, he wrote a book called the Antiquities. He gives, an, 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 gives examples of two messiahs. There was also another one that called the people to Jordan. And he promised them that he's going to split Jordan into two. Praise the wonderful name. And now people, are, they, went, they went to Jordan to look at this man that claimed to be the Messiah. Praise God. So claiming to be the Messiah was something that was, it was, historically, it was not a strange thing. People used to claim to be the Messiah. Praise God. And inside of them, they were waiting for that man to come. And when you read a scripture, listen, before I go on in John chapter 7 from verse 31, it says this from uh, John chapter 7. From that one, because Jesus performed some miracles, and this was Christ. I'm reading it from a New Living Translation. It says, Many among the crowds at the temple believed in him. And then, after all, they say, Would you expect the Messiah to do more miracles, signs than this man has done? Look at that. Thank you. Praise on the name. Because now, after all this, they didn't expect another person would come and perform more miracles than the Messiah. So the only way they are believing is because this man has done something we've never seen. Praise God. That is why he's weeping for Capernaum. Saying, Capernaum, if these things were done in Sodom, they would have repented. And up to date, they could start. Praise God. So they knew when the Messiah comes, there are things he's going to do. And now they are going to believe the Messiah. When you go to John chapter... John chapter 3, I want to read for you about believing is not a, all of us are believers of one thing or something. Yeah. Praise the wonderful name. Yeah. When you say you are a believer, it's not a strange thing. Okay, it's very nice. But what are you believing? Praise the wonderful name. Yeah. This is what are you believing? Are you going to church? So good, so nice. But what, what kind of church is it? Is it the church of the kingdom? Is it the church in the wilderness? Is it the church at Pentecost that began at Pentecost? Praise God. So it is so important to be so specific, especially today, especially today. You know, when you study how people have been deceived through the time, you will not joke. There was a time for you to go to heaven, you had to buy some indulgences. For you to have peace in your heart that you are going to go to heaven, there are some things you had to buy. Even there is a time Pop came and told the people that are, were condemned in their heart and told them, you know, God is going to forgive you if you form an army and go and defend Jerusalem. And they created things called crusades. So the people that felt that they were condemned in their hearts, they came from all over Europe to go and deliver Jerusalem. Praise God. Who, knowing something in their hearts that I'm going to be saved because I'm fighting for God. Praise God. Look at how people have been deceived over time. But it's a very good time to be to exist. Praise God. Don't get deceived. Don't get deceived. Paul says, be not deceived. Be not deceived. Amen. Praise God. So in John chapter chapter 3, verse 15, it says this. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Now watch what follows next. That whosoever believes on him should not perish, but have eternal life. What a good Sunday school scripture. We loved it from the time we, we every Sunday school student knows this. Let us go to verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave this beloved, that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him, the one that believes here does not believe that he died and rose. Praise God. He don't believe that he died and rose. The faith, let me tell you the faith. The faith you'll get in John chapter 20. John chapter 20 from verse 35, 31, John 20. And many other signs 
treat Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. Get verse 31. But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing he might have life through his name. Amen. That you might believe that Jesus Christ is that Jesus is that Christ. that Jesus is that Christ. So this the miracles. Praise the wonderful name. Because John elucidated as a term in English. I'm beginning to follow the first steps of pastor. <laughs> Praise God, just clap for me. As I try that term. It's called elucidated. Something like that. Explain. John explained miracles that identified Jesus as the Messiah. Praise God. And he said there were more to be written. Praise God. But these are written that he might believe that Jesus is the Christ. Matthew 16. Thou art the, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Praise God. So you realize everything written in the book of John is to believe him as who? As who? So for God said, for God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten, that whoever believes in him as who? Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Let, let me continue reading. Perhaps you're still, uh, you're still holding on to something. <laughs> Verse 18. He that believeth on him is not condemned. He that believeth on him is not condemned. What are you believing? You are believing on him as Christ. Is that you believing? Because remember, who is doing the greater works? Verily, verily, I say unto you, if you will believe, you are going to perform the greater works. So who is believing? Praise the wonderful name. Remember, if you are going to be a divider, you need to have tools for division. You need to know because you are a workman. Every workman must have tools. If you are going to slaughter a cow, you cannot carry a razor blade. You cannot carry a scalpel. Praise God. Yes, it cuts. But that is not the right tool for that moment. Praise the wonderful name. And while reading your Bible as a student, you have to know what, what to use at what stage in your study. Praise God. Because it is connected with your reward. It is connected with the crown of glory. It is connected with the praise. Praise God. It is connected with being proud, not being ashamed at that time. And one thing that you should know is who is speaking to whom is he speaking it to? Praise the wonderful name. Who is being spoken to here? It says, he, he that believeth on him. Let us continue. Let's, go, let's continue reading. Let's go to verse 36. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. These are very, very beautiful scriptures, is it? Are they? <laughs> he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And you may tend to believe these talks about your salvation. Because they are almost close to it. Praise God. Because it is faith. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not on the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God abideth on him. Praise the wonderful name. Let, let's, let's, let's keep reading to 5 verse 24. Verily, very I say unto you. Remember, these statements are said after a sign. These statements are said after they have seen a messianic miracle. Amen. These statements are said after they have seen something they have never seen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. When the son of the noble man is healed, these statements are being with say, praise the wonderful name. And when you come to John 5, 24, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my words and believed on him that sent me has everlasting life and shall not come unto condemnation. Praise God. Continue turning your pages 6 from verse 35. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger and be thirst. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Praise God. But I say unto you that ye also have seen me and believed not. By not believing Jesus as the Messiah, they are going to go into condemnation. But by believing Jesus as the Messiah, the one promised in the scriptures, through the signs they have seen, they are going to be partakers of everlasting life. Praise the wonderful name. Have they believed according to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 from verse 1? You will ask me honestly, what is that scripture talking about? First Corinthians chapter 15 from verse 1 talks about the Christ we believe. Amen. 
says we believe him that died according to the scriptures. We believe him that was buried according to the scriptures. We believe him that rose according to the scriptures. Praise the Lord of them. But are they believing the same? No. Christ is not a dead. Praise God. In fact, even Peter didn't preach the cross. Amen. So when they are talking about believing him, you are believing that he is the one. He is the one that remember that Peter received the reward by identifying Jesus as the Christ. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. By just identifying that you are the Christ. Amen. Says that upon this rock I build my church. And I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom by what you knew how to identify who I was. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. That is not identifying the that is not the Jesus that came to you. Amen. That's the Jesus after the flesh. But you don't know him after the flesh. Praise the wonderful name. But he that believes on him shall have everlasting life. Amen. He must the Messiah. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. Based on the works he has done. We don't believe on Jesus based on based on signs and all those things. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. So what are we? Let's continue reading. Let us go to verse 40. And this is the will to start from verse 39. And this is the Father's will which he had sent me. Of all which he had given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again in the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which sees the Son and believes on him may have everlasting life. Praise the wonderful name. Seeing the Son and believing the Son. Praise God. Amen. You have to understand. Now let me tell you something. These people in Judea, in Jerusalem, in in Samaria, in all those places, they were waiting for Jesus. Praise the Lord. Not just Jesus, they were waiting for a Messiah. Amen. And they, they, they were things they knew the Messiah would do. Amen. The Messiah, Messianic miracles even no go for them. It, it even responds to Jesus fighting their wars. Praise the Lord. They knew when he came, Jesus in more is Messianic. Because is this the time you're going to restore the kingdom? Because there's something they expect when the Messiah comes, is going to do for them. They're not going to be under the oppression of Gentile nations. Praise the wonderful name. There are, they, they are things they knew he's going to do for them. Remember, we are not people expecting the first coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. But they knew Jesus is going to come. But we, in our own alien world, we are not people waiting for the first coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. But they were, were they? They were waiting for the Lord Jesus. They knew Elias must fast come. And Elias will point them to the Messiah, the son of David. Praise the wonderful name. So when you read the entire book of gospel, there is one thing you will discover. It is not written to you. Yes. Amen. Yet instructionally and, and, and correctionally and by reproof, you are going to benefit from it. Praise the wonderful name. Doctrinally, there is no salvation inside that book. Because you have to believe Jesus as the son of David. And that is not the Jesus we are believing. We are believing Jesus that appeared to Paul on his way to Damascus. Praise the wonderful name. That's not the Jesus. You have to know the Jesus you believe. Because if you believe Jesus after the flesh, you are not in the body. Praise the wonderful name. You have to be a Jew. Because Jesus is a Jew. Praise the wonderful name. And if you believe Jesus is a baby being born 12 years, keeping the, all the commandments, you must keep the commandment. Because you belong to the people that are going to overcome. Praise the wonderful name. But I don't believe I'm speaking to them this wonderful evening. Am I speaking to such? Because you are going to keep the commandments, you are going to wait for the tree of life. Praise the wonderful name. You are going to say you are going to sit on the throne. Because there are women here that wanted to sit on the throne without overcoming. Praise the wonderful name. So we see, when you meet Jesus after the flesh, expect two things. You must be a law keeper. It is, it is that hard. Praise the wonderful name. You must show yourself to the priest. Jesus was made under the law. And he abides with the Lord. Praise God. So one thing you learn about the Gospel of John when he's presenting the Messiah is presenting the Son of David in a very special way using the signs. And he's going to say something. Do you believe on him? Do you believe on him? John, what is your message? I have only one condition. Understand the sign. Believe. If you miss it, you die. It was that hard for them. If you miss it, you die. And now Jesus is coming at John chapter 14. People are discouraged because he's going. He says, why is your heart troubled? And he's going to give them a promise. The little flock. What a Praise the wonderful name. Those little flock are going to be partakers of promises. It says, out of their innermost beings, those that believe on me. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. So these people that believed on Jesus, 
God, Jesus motivated them. Jesus told them, you know what? Out of your innermost beings shall flow rivers of water. Praise the for them. If you believe on me, greater works than this shall you do. You don't have to. Think. You know when people think of greater works, and now when they think about walking, it, it has disturbed Christians today that don't divide. Praise the for them. When they think of greater works, and then they come and assess this church. They say, where is the greater works? Who, who, who has walked on water here? Praise God of your name. Who has died and risen he, around here? Praise God. So you see, they start explaining what greater works means. Praise God of your name. They say, you know, Nesmas, you know, Jesus only preached in Israel. But you know, we are preaching outside Israel. We are, we are, we are covering a bigger territory. That is greater works. Praise God of your name. So they are trying to explain what does greater works mean? Because as far as leading, you know, if you read the Bible, what the Bible says, leave it, it is like that. If it talks of greater works, it is greater works. Praise God of your name. Don't tell us what it means. It is the way it is. As, but let me tell you one thing as a, as a person that divides. We read the Bible literally. Praise God of your name. But other people spiritualize it, allegorize it. They put a meaning. You know, it means like this, like this. When it says, I will write a new covenant with the house of Judah. And the house of Israel. It means that way. Praise the wonderful name. Don't come and say, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, we are the Israel of. No, 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 no. If it is the house of Judah, the house of Israel, it is just like that. When it says greater works, it is greater works. Then the question will be, when is the time for the greater works? When will it be done? Who is the person going to do the greater works? Praise the wonderful name. Hallelujah. So this, the aspect of greater works disturbs the people. Another one will come and say, you know, this must. These greater works, you know, Jesus performed the miracles before Calvary. So these works we are doing are greater because it is after Calvary. Praise the wonderful name. That is not what the Bible says. Praise the wonderful name. So people are trying to understand, they are trying to put meaning to what greater works might mean. Praise God. If you are a prosperity teacher, now that's a good thing, a good topic. Greater works. Praise the wonderful name. Greater works. And we know greater works means this and this and this. Whatever meaning you will put to it. But that is not as far as context is concerned. That's not what it means. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So we see now when people read the book of John without actually going back to what John wanted to present by giving those signs and those wonders, you are going to allegorize it. You are going to spiritualize it. And you are going to miss the point of John. Amen. And you are going to do John a disservice. If John rises up and, is, and he, see, he sees you, say, no, that's not what I meant. That's not what I wanted you to get from that book. Praise God. Amen. We are trying to look at believing. Where were we? We are in 6 chapter from verse 40. Let us go to verse 47. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me has everlasting life. You know how these scriptures are sweet? <laughs> Praise God. Amen. 7 from verse 38, the one of the innermost being. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of water. Praise God. Amen. 11 verse 25. Uh -huh, 11 from verse 25. It says this. This is now the raising of Lazarus. That's true. And you have to remember that every time a benediction is meant, unakuja baadae unasema, nimeona hii na hii na hii, na nakuamini kuamba wewe kiyo Messiah. You are the son of David that you are waiting for. So when you come to John chapter 11 verse 25, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, ye shall be, ye shall live. Praise on the name. And whosoever liveth and believeth on me shall never die. Believeth thou this? She said unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ. Praise on the name. Every Jew believe that. Part of the beautiful there are those that did not accept Jesus Christ as the Christ. Praise the Lord. They call it blasphemy. But what is this woman saying? Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ. What does that mean? The anointed one, the son of David. Amen. Praise God. Thou art the Christ, the son of God, which, no, they were, look what she is saying, which should come into the world. So they were waiting on him. That was what the woman at the well said. We know when he comes, he will do these things. When you go to from verse uh, 45, 
Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did. What were the things? A dead man after four days rising up. That was never seen in Israel. Amen. Praise God of your name. Amen. That was messianic. They have never seen a miracle like that. How can a person come back after four days? Praise God. Amen. But when they saw that, they believed on him. Amen. The way you believe on him? No. They believed on him as Christ. Amen. Verse 46. But some of them went their way to the Pharisees and told them what things Jesus had done. From verse 47. Then gathered the chief priests and Pharisees and council and said, what do, what do we? For this man doeth many miracles and is attracting a people. People are believing on him. Praise God. That is what the problem is with, with Capernaum. It is at Capernaum that the, the house was, the, the roof was removed and someone entered. Praise God. It is at Capernaum that they saw a leper get well. It is at Capernaum that they received the messianic miracles of God. Yet they rejected that. And says, woe unto you, Capernaum. Woe unto you, Capernaum. Praise God. Because by the works they had seen, they should just believe one thing. You are the Messiah. Amen. Thou art the Christ. There was no powerful statement as thou art the Christ. Amen. Praise God. Amen. That statement of thou art the Christ was so powerful. Amen. Praise God. It shows an understanding. Amen. It shows John could say, now my message is home. Now you've understood what I was presenting, that gospel of John. Praise God. Amen. Thou art the Christ. So what do you see when you go to 12 from us? So just keep following. 1244. Jesus cried and said, He that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. Praise God. I am come as light into the world, that whosoever believes on me should not abide in darkness. My friend, those statements don't confuse it with the epistles of Paul. Praise God of your name. Don't confuse it with how you are getting your salvation. But you know how close they are. Praise God. I am come as light into the world, and whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. There was a time in John chapter 7 when Jesus was hiding himself. Even the apostles came and advised Jesus, you should go and show yourself. Go and show your signs and wonders in today. Praise the wonderful name. Why are you going to have such gifts and you are going to hide it? Go and show yourself so that they can believe you as the Christ. Praise the wonderful name. And Jesus said, my time has not yet come. Praise God. So this Jew demanded a sign. And when God gave them a sign, they did not receive that sign. And God forsook them. Praise God. They rejected the son. The son had to go. Because they cannot do greater works when the sun is around. Praise the Lord of your name. That is what is written in John 14 verse 2. That until I go, we will read it. Praise God. And uh, 11, 20, 12 from, let's go to 14 now. 14 from verse uh, 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me. So the first question is, who does the greater works? Who does the greater works? It is a person that believes on him. But what does this person believe about him? Amen. Praise on the name. Amen. From John chapter 3, chapter 6, chapter 7, chapter 11, we have seen on what they are believing about Jesus. Praise on the name. And we have seen that is not the way you believe Jesus. That is not the way you see Jesus. Praise God. But who does this greater works? I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than this shall he do, because I go unto my father. Yes. Why is he going? They have rejected the son. Amen. When the son was coming, they did not accept him. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. And now he's just going to console them. And now he's departed. Now he's going. And this, this, uh, this little flock that believe the Lord Jesus Christ, they, are, they have some promises that Jesus left for them. Praise God. That they are holding to it. That we are going to do the greater works. That out of the innermost beings shall flow rivers of water. Praise the Lord of the name. So what are we seeing? When you study the gospel of John, John had just seen one objective. By showing you those messianic miracles, he wanted the, the reader whom he knew was a Jew. Amen. Praise the Lord of the name. Whom he knew was going to be a Jew. Because by then, now those are how those books circulated. 
It's based on of name. It is only today that it is compiled into 66 books. But by the, when you study history, they, do, they just used to write it. So that when the reader, let the reader know, let the buyer know, Tobias. <laughs> when the reader reads it, they believe that Jesus is the Christ. Praise God. Jesus is that Messiah that we've been waiting for. That this person cannot confuse the identity of who Jesus is. Praise God. And whosoever believes on me, that's what Jesus says. Whosoever believes on me, greater works than this shall you do. So did Jesus perform messianic miracles? So messianic miracles are not going to end. They are going to continue with his followers. Praise the wonderful name. They are going to be under the messianic anointing. Until also they come to us seven again. Praise God. When that door is going to be shut again. Praise the wonderful name. But the Messiah, the drum of the Messiah, he's still going to be bent. Or is still going to be beaten. Or is still going to be? <laughs> Praise the wonderful name. They are still going to say, what, by what name are you doing these miracles? It is by the name of that Jesus Christ. Praise the wonderful name. They are still going to do to attract a people again. Amen. Until a season again, the messianic is going to be closed. Amen. And there is no more messianic that is going to be spoken again. Until Matthew 24 from verse 10. Until the body of Christ leaves this place. Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. So being in Christ, you should know where you are in Christ. Praise God. Because you can be in Christ and not be in the body. We've seen how believing on Christ has eternal life. Praise the wonderful name. But the Christ they are believing is not the Christ, the head of the body. It is the Christ, the son of David. Praise the wonderful name. The son of Abraham. So being in Christ is not just being in Christ. Is what, who, who, what does Jesus mean to you? Praise the wonderful name. What does Jesus mean to you? For Paul, Jesus, Jesus meant something. Praise the wonderful name. Paul was a believer. Peter was a believer. Amen. But did they believe the same thing? Did they preach the same thing? Did they go to the same places? Praise the wonderful name. Amen. Did they have the same audiences? Did they have the same language? Praise the wonderful name. Amen. They were different. Yes. Peter could say, repent and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And you shall receive the remission of sin. Amen. Peter could talk about the time of refreshment. The time of the restitution of all things. Praise the wonderful name. But Paul could come and say, there is, there is one Lord, one faith. Praise the wonderful name. One baptism. Praise God. Let me tell you, some, even the people in the book of Acts, they walked in the spirit and they didn't know what gift they had. Praise the wonderful name. Sometimes you can have an experience and even don't know what to call that experience. Until when Paul could come and say, you know what that gift is called? That's called the word of knowledge. Praise the wonderful name. That gift that you are performing there, he had, he had to tell that to a Corinthian church. Praise the wonderful name. Because the church was living in spiritual gifts and they didn't know what the gifts were. Amen. Praise God. Until now their father came. Says we have many instructors. But in Christ Jesus, you have only one person that regards you. Praise God. And says that gift is called word of knowledge. Praise God. Amen. That one is called is miracles. It is this, it is that. Praise God. In the church he set apostles. Even there's a place in the book of Corinthians that says he set first apostles. Secondarily, prophets. He comes and puts an order. These poor, they are praise the wonderful name. They are appointed deacons, but there was a form of hidden wisdom that came with Paul. Praise God. Even Peter acknowledged that. They preached different things. The Christ they met, Paul says this, he that sent me. Praise the wonderful name. There was a person that sent Peter. Feed my lamb, feed my sheep. That was John chapter 21. Praise the wonderful name. Feed my lamb, feed my sheep. He sent him. Go. But again, Paul comes and says, He that sent me. So the question is, what Jesus sent who and who and who? Amen. Praise the wonderful name. Amen. Are Jesus divided? Yes. There's the Jesus, the son of David, and there's the Jesus according to mystery, the head of the body. Praise the wonderful name. He said, he, said, he that sent me. He that sent me. But Peter is also going and saying, He that sent me. I do not want you to forget these things. I know my ministry is coming to an end. Praise the wonderful name. But I want to bring to your remembrance the things that I know about this Jesus. Amen. Says you know did not believe cunningly devised fables. Says let me tell you I was an eyewitness. Amen. Praise God. I was an eyewitness of his majesty. Praise God. Amen. But when Paul comes and says I know of a man. Wow. Praise the wonderful name. All of them have testimonies of this Jesus. Amen. Paul comes and says I know of a man that was caught into the third heavens 
whether in the body or out of the body, I don't know. Praise God. These two have testimonies about Jesus. Even when the, when the boat of Peter was capsizing, not with the boat of Peter, the boat of Paul was capsizing. He had an experience. When Peter was in prison, he also had an experience. That's why Paul, that's why Paul could say that the way he was exceeding in their ministry, he was also exceeding in my ministry. Whatever you'll find in their ministry was also in mine. Praise God of your name. Did the angel deliver Peter from prison? Did the angel come and give an affirmation to Paul when the boat was capsizing? Did Paul say that the angel he serves and he belongs to? Praise God of your name. So you realize now when Paul was coming, he was coming with an entire dispensation. That you cannot come and go now to the book of, when you go to, when you go, you start becoming like Jeroboam. Praise God. And become a replacement of something that was not originally yours. Praise God. So you start going to this. this let me tell you something. The Gospels, as far as the Gospels are concerned, there is no gospel of grace there. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. It only has one gospel. Yeah. The gospel of the kingdom. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And you have to understand, in the gospels, there is only one emphasis. The Lord Jesus Christ. As their king. Praise God. Amen. As their king that was coming. That is why it is full of miracles. That is just why it is full of signs and wonders. Praise God. Amen. Amen. And it's in the Gospels you'll find, come follow me. Is, that, is it there in the Gospels? Again, in the Epistles, you'll find the same statement. Come follow me. Peter didn't say that statement. That's true. James didn't say that statement. Amen. Jesus said, come follow me. Paul says, be followers of me, as I'm a follower of Christ. Praise on your name. It is in those statements Jesus said, a sower went to sow. Praise on your name. Jesus was a sower. In the Gospels, in the Epistles, Paul is a sower. He says, I planted. Praise on the name. I planted. Apollo's water. Praise on the name. Peter was never a sower of anything. Praise on the name. But Paul was a sower. Jesus was a sower. Praise on the name. So when you study the Jesus in the Gospel, and the Jesus, theology the, does disturb the theologians. There are some theologians that say Paul is a, is not a, there are some theologians that have just put Paul aside. Because when they go word for word, it contradicts. Yeah. Praise on the name. But it is just different dispensations. Praise on the name. They just need to come and sit under right division of the word. They should know which belongs where and which belongs where. where. Praise God. Yeah. So when you study the ministries of Jesus, Jesus was an apostle to the circumcision. Praise God. Yeah. Paul was an apostle to the uncircumcision. Praise God. Yeah. Jesus was made under the law. Paul who said the law profits nothing. Praise God. So you realize these two, when Jesus that is presenting the gospels, when a Jew meets that Jesus, he rejoices. Praise God. But when a Jew meets a Jesus presented by Paul, it becomes a stumbling block. He says, I know you don't know that Jesus. Praise God. That is how when Paul met Jews. You know when Paul began his ministry, he dealt with Jews along the way. In Acts 19, he found some Jews. He had to speak their language. Because he said, when I went to a barbarian, I became a barbarian. Yeah. To a Jew, I became a Jew that I can be in Christ. Praise God. So he speaks to them, by whose name are you baptized? So if they knew John, these were Jews, praise God of your name. Because he says, under John's baptism. So he says, he expounded the scriptures to them. Gentiles didn't have scriptures. Praise God. He is going to expound the scriptures to them. He has to go to the Torah, the prophets, the Psalms, and the kings. Praise God of your name. And tell them that this is the king that is to come. That is how Paul was, praise God. He says, I came to the Jew first, and then the Greek. So, Paul was a very wise man. He says, as a wise master. Builder. Those are statements. Peter could, could look for a dictionary. Praise God. So, what, what does he mean by these statements? Why is he calling himself a wise master builder? He came to, there's a chapter Paul goes through. An entire chapter in the book of Luke. Paul says, I'm going to boast. I know of a man, praise on the name, because all in Terum Kiasan. Kasada Mimi Acha no one be a mimi to go to the young. Nime in Yamazia Sana, but Acha is spoken and is saying, Praise God. So you realize now that all, and when Paul is giving the ministry to us, it is not a photocopy. 
So you cannot run out to the book of John and say, I'm believing on him. I want greater works. Praise all of them. Um, you cannot go to the book of you cannot go to the book of John and talk about out of the innermost being as your promise. Praise all of them. As if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you've passed from death into eternal. Praise God. So what do you learn? Or what do we see? A Jew, there were signs they were waiting for. And they despised that sign when Jesus came. Praise God. Amen. And Jesus went. Jesus, Jesus wept for them. He wept for Jerusalem in Matthew 23. And he left. But he left a promise for the little flock. Amen. And said, and for any other person that will believe. Because in John chapter 17, he prays. He says, I'm praying for these people. And for those that will believe on them. Amen. Praise all of them. Amen. And what are they going to preach? The gospel of the kingdom. Amen. And he that believes on me, greater works than this shall you do. They are going to go now with messianic miracles. Why? Because now they are a representative of our priest nation. They are a representative of our king nation. They are representative of a, a nation that is supposed to be the head of the entire nation. Praise God. They are going to go in places where scorpions will eat them and they will not die. Matthew 16, no Mark 16, and Matthew 28 is going to be affected. Praise God. They are going to move translated from one place to another. They are partakers of the same great works. They are, it, it is Israel that have national evangelism. Praise God. Moving from one place to another. They have territorial blessings. Praise God. It is, but for we, it is, it is as individuals. Praise God. There's always a song that we always sing. Nita Atangaza, Neno Laki Buana, Koma Taifa, Mali Mali, oh, oh, oh. It's a very good song when we dance and when we forget the lyrics. Praise God. You are just there dancing for the sake of dancing. It's so good. Praise God. But when it now comes to the lyrics, it's another statement. <laughs> It is them that now go to national. They go with paths that God has given them yeah. to go and have a national evangelism. They even have national repentance. Yes. Praise God. A king could come and declare a national repentance yeah. and say, all oh, my people under my domain, let us put sackcloth. You cannot do that. Yeah. You can't do that today. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Yeah. So what are we learning? You have to know how to move as a divider. Praise God. Yeah. You have to know your tools as a divider. As a workman, you have to know your tools. You have to know the language in the book. You have to know, read it the way it is written. Don't put meaning into it. Yes. It's the way it is written, it is the way it is. If you don't understand that English, just go to the dictionary. That is how it is so simple. No, you can't fail it. Praise God. Just go if the English is too hard. Go find it. It is what it means, it's what it means. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Don't allegorize it. Don't try and say, you know, I'm waiting for revelation. <laughs> you know, I'm waiting. What does praise God of your name? You will, you, will, you will get lost. You will start looking for a seer. You know, you know that's how people become seers. So you start, Onesimus, what do you think that scripture means? So you know, an angel appeared at night. You know, I was meditating about that scripture. I didn't know what it meant. But I can tell you, in the middle of the night, mm. he came. And I know what I know what that means. Praise God. You will encourage that thing. <laughs> Praise God. So let us continue studying your word. Read it literally. Amen. That is why Pranam stumbled us. Because could come with an angel and terrify us. But as Pastor told us, we don't care. That angel was stupid. Praise God. That angel did not even know that Moses was given three signs. Praise God. He did know a lot of things. You need to be taught. Praise God. God bless you. God keep you. Continue. Go read that book of John. Praise God. Go study those messianic signs. Go study every time a sign is performed. It is connected with the identity of Jesus Christ. And it is connected with them. With them believing Jesus as that Christ. So the book of John, continue to keep reading it to become more easier to understand the identity of who Jesus is, what was the objective of John, why did he write his gospel the way he wrote it. Otherwise, God bless you and God keep you. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us just give a hand of praise unto the Lord and thank him for what he has done unto us. Amen. Pastor, welcome. Amen. Let's give it to Patunga to pick him a coffee. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Amen, amen. I am a Marisa Raka. See them. That was really nice. You appreciate it so much. Thank you so much. The Bible becomes really sweet. 
There is the way some food can be cooked. Mama Shalom, I didn't say that. You are too heavy. You are my only gum. Hello, I'm from Fika. My name is Isof. I'm from Fika. 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 There is the way the Bible can be taught. You step one statement. If it's put in perspective, yeah. you love God. Amen. You understand the miracles of Jesus are not just miracles. Amen. Sometimes it comes to a place like when he resurrected. I just read that down. The resurrection of Lazarus was not a normal resurrection. Like people looking for someone is dead and they say, "Afu fuke." He said, "Father, that they might believe that you have sent me." So the, the resurrection of Lazarus was connected to them identifying who Jesus is, and that's why he allowed Lazarus to die. And then when they say they see Lazarus is dead, and then he keeps on going far away, and then he tells them Lazarus is not dead. Then Thomas comes and says, "If he's not dead, let's go and die together with him." In and then he comes around and he says, "No, it is for the glory of God." If you look at the way God was determined for these eyes of the Jews to know who Jesus was. You understand when Jesus Christ, when the demons saw him and say, "Thou art Christ," that is the great confession. Thou art Christ is a big confession. Peter had that confession. Thou art Christ. Mary had that confession. Thou art Christ. Who else? Nathaniel had that confession, but he said, "You are the King," and then he was promised something else. You will see greater things than this. Then the demon said, "Thou art the Christ," and Jesus said, "Shh, shh," because he had greater works to point them to the Messiah. And that's why you realize when you, uh, when uh, when John went to ask, go ask him, is he the one, or you should wait for the other? Now, let me tell you, people say John had confused. When John pointed people to Jesus, Jesus had not done the miracle. There were two things to identify Jesus the Messiah to John. Do you come on? You know what I'm saying? The first one, the one you see the dove abiding on, is the one. That was one sign. The next sign was supposed to be the miracles, and that's what that John was asking. I'm in a prison. I've seen one sign. I know he's the Messiah because he that sent me to baptize say the one you see the dove abiding on. But that was not all. The dove alone was not enough identification. The next identification was messianic signs and wonders. That's why Psalm seventy-four says, "We have no signs," and that's why this man, the next sign to be performed after Moses, was supposed to be done by the Messiah. Amen. And that's why this man called Gideon asked, "Where are the signs and the wonders you promised us?" The next person to perform the miracles was supposed to be who? The Messiah. And that's why there was someone called the Bajesus. Remember Bajesus who took 400? It was anyone who came with a miracle. That's why I'm so very good scripture that says, Messiah Jesus that I you just said you could. They knew the Messiah. My friend, we didn't even know the Messiah. The miracle God has given us is an overflow of the grace of God. It is just because we believe a supernatural God. So there are not miracles for this thing. Miracles in Matthew 10 was to reveal to them this is the Messiah. Then you can understand why Jesus condemned Capernaum. He said the miracles done in Sodom, if they were done in Capernaum, because those were messianic miracles. There is something he said. Do not forget. We are really learning scriptures. There are miracles that Jesus did that are not connected to Messiah. Just normal miracles. But there are others that were messianic to point to Israel. Amen. 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 That's why the Old Testament was the promise of two things: the king and the kingdom. Then Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is the presenting of the king and the kingdom. Amen. And then the king is rejected. First rejection in Matthew twelve. Then Matthew thirteen, he doesn't stop there. He gives them the mysteries of the kingdom. He was rejected in Matthew twelve. They call him Belzebub. Another story is in this the son of David, which means the Messiah. 
Then he gave them the miracles. I mean, the mysteries. Then he also gave them another time. He says, when the Holy Spirit will come to do the same signs, to do what? Convince them to not blaspheme. So they were given Jesus Christ to who them? They were blinded. Then the Holy Spirit came. What did the Holy Spirit come to do? Create a sign that this shall you do. What were the signs for? To further convince them. Yes. Then it comes John. I mean, uh, what is his name? Stephen. They saw Stephen in the chapter. Then in chapter 12, Peter comes. He's put in prison. Then in chapter 13, Paul comes. And Paul still goes to the Jews to give them the final sign. What do they do? They reject that he washes his feet. The next time we shall see the book of Revelation is now the king coming in judgment. Amen. He's going to come in judgment because they rejected him. Amen. The king that was rejected still was exalted. On the right hand of God, what was he exalted for? That he might become the head of the church. They rejected king was crucified, but then exalted that he might become the head of the church. So when they rejected the king, it opened the path of the apostolic church. And the apostolic church I'm talking about is not the church under Peter, it's the church under Paul. You appreciate our brother? God bless you so much. It helps us to come to church with an expectation. I told you, the more you fill your heart with the word of God, the more you know how to pray. Uh, that is the one who follows Mama Shalom twice. You know him, Abraham? He's the uncle of these guys here. So we shall be leaving tomorrow at around 9. Going to Nairobi for, for Salem's graduation. She sent her greetings to you. Amen. God gave her grace and uh, there was only one. She got second class Second class up. Can you Peter Vizu? She was actually doing uh, criminology and criminal justice. Musi Kesa na funga mutu. Kona detective. But when you pray for us, we shall be. We want to go and then be able to be back on Saturday. So we want to leave tomorrow and then we arrive there Friday. Shalom has improved. She, she was in school today, she was, she was sick. He said, okay, so we shall be going on Friday, no, tomorrow. The graduation is on Friday, and then on Saturday we shall be on our way to be here on Sunday to listen to Brother Godfrey, amen? Yeah. You are coming to church with a lot of expectation. Yeah, and then Brother Judah also said his greetings to you. He is very happy that we are raised in the church as a family. And he loves the idea of going to keki. Yo keki and the kukatu. Kila wakati tuwe na nini? Tuwe na keki. Kila wakati wakati mmoja wetu anafanya ka, ka birthday kama tunaweza tutengeneze ka keki tutaku. Hata kama ni kadogo, tengeneze kale kadogo mpaka tuseme leo kalikuwa kadogo lakini tukule. That will next family to be one. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much. Uh, anything else? No, not much, brother. Give us a song. We go want to pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Blessed Redeemer, we are so grateful for your word, O oh God. We want to thank you that the Father, Lord Jesus Christ, the one that was rejected as a king, was still exalted to the head of the church. And even the Father, Peter presented him as the king of Israel, but the Paul presented him as the head of the church. And even the Father, we are not under the king, because the kingdom has not been issued. The kingdom is still in abeyance. But Father, we are under Christ as the head of the church. And Father, as the body, Lord God, is connected to the head, and the head is way up there in heaven, we are walking on earth in the name of Jesus. Father, we are connected to the life giver. We are connected in every way to the Lord Jesus. We appreciate you and we are grateful, Lord. You are our head, Father. We thank you. We bless you, Lord God. As we depart, as we go to our homes, we thank you for each one of us who are away. Minister grace to them. Bless our brother who has ministered, Lord. We are looking forward, Lord God, your blessings in our journeys we are going to make and bless us again on Sunday. We appreciate you blessing in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. What does one do say?